Hey everybody, welcome to Wet Felting a Fairy Tale Pumpkin. I am Marie Spaulding, and today we are here in my home studio in Austin, Texas. Some of you know me, uh, I own Living Felt Felting Supplies, and we have been having a lot of fun this year doing live felt alongs. And today we are going to be wet felting fairy tale pumpkins. So, as people are joining, say hi and where you're from. And I'm going to pause here in just a second and greet some people too before we get started. Started. And I'm going to refresh my screen and hopefully you can hear me okay. So, as long as the volume is fine and you can see okay, um, cool. And if you have any issues, go ahead and post them. While we're waiting for people to join in, let me tell you if there are any challenges during the broadcast, which there are sometimes with live, try and refresh your screen or re-click the Living Felt logo icon on the top left of your browser to refresh the page. If it's on our side, we will restart if possible. So that would break the live feed in two. And if something just goes haywire and we lose our live connection, Never fear, we will um, finish the recording and post it to Facebook as soon as we can. And this is being recorded, so this live version will be posted to YouTube sometime later this weekend. And then sort of a stripped down non-live version will be posted to YouTube also under our wet felting tutorials. So let me say hi to some folks and then we'll do a little bit more information about what we're doing today and how you can watch the videos back and get some extra support materials. I'm going to come up here and refresh my screen so that I can see all of you joining in and say hi to some people. Um, Okay, I see we have a number of folks here. There's Joyce, nice to see you. Sherry in Shreveport, right on. Blanca up there in Pflugerville, that's just right in our neck of the nape. Judy's here and uh, Jane is here. Hi everyone. Yeah, say hi and where you're from. So there's Larry in Indiana. Penny is in um, Holland. So nice to see you. Welcome everyone. I'm so glad to have you here. So for those of you who are just chiming in, um, today we are wet felting fairy tale pumpkins and this is going to be a hybrid live felt along because these pumpkins take a little while to make. I can't do it in two hours time. So what we have is we have done these videos for you and today I'm going to walk you through it so that you can see each step. Let me see a show of hearts for how many of you are set up and are actually going to felt along live with us today. Would you just send a stream, uh, give us a thumbs up or a heart and I'm going to look for that here and refresh my screen here. That's so nice to see you all. Or say yes I am, yes felting, or that you're gonna felt later. And I'm gonna look for that and look for all of you. Thank you for joining us today. It's so nice to have you on a Friday afternoon. And hey, I wanna do a shout out and say thank you to all of the fairies at Living Felt. I appreciate you so much. If it wasn't for those magical gals taking care of so many things, I couldn't be here felting with you today. And a big happy birthday to Kayla, one of the fairies at the shop. Today's her birthday and she's working nonetheless. Gotta love that. And of course, thank you to, to my beautiful husband for everything he does to make these uh, little shows possible. Um, just really appreciate all of you being here too. So I'm looking to see how many of you are actually going to be felting along with us today. Felt later, homeschooling, uh, um, yes, yes, felting, good. Okay, so I'm going to run through some of the details while people are joining us. Today, we are going to wet felt. This is the pumpkin that I am going to make with you, this one right here. Um, and we're going to go over the pattern. If you're felting along, then I assume that you've already cut out your pattern and you have your station set up. But for the benefit of everyone, we are going to run over how to set up your supply station, what the pattern looks like, and what all the supplies look like. That's going to take about five minutes. The actual felting portion is just over an hour until we get it off the resist. What we're going to do is the layout, during the layout, a lot of the felting happens. After we take it off the resist, we're going to felt it a little bit more 
and then we're going to insto presto dry the pumpkin and stuff it and make the stem and finish it off so that's the plan for today this is a two hour session if you can't be here the whole time no worries there's going to be three ways to see this video after immediately following the broadcast this version that we're playing right now will be under videos right here on facebook.com slash living felt later we will upload this live version to our live playlist on youtube so make sure to subscribe to us on youtube slash living felt and then later in the weekend we're going to upload um this tutorial without all the live back and forth question and answers to our wet felting section in our tutorials being here today with me means we're going to have an opportunity to answer your questions and hopefully coach you along while you go so quickly here's the here's two pumpkins they're very similar the difference is this one was made with more lobes and this one with less and if you don't understand how those are made yet we're going to see it right here when we set up and get going this is the style of template we're using to make the pumpkin i'm going to show you that again but what it has is multiple pages and we're going to felt over each one of these pages to make these different lobes if this is a little intimidating for you or if you've never wet felted over a resist before definitely think about making one of these guys this is so simple look we have free wet felting tutorials for wet felting over resist a simple one is to make a bowl another one is to make some wrist warmers that one works with fine fibers like merino top we also have a little felt along that we posted i think we reposted it here to our videos we did this one last year so uh, the video is what it is the quality i mean but you can see exactly how we made this if what we're doing today feels a little too advanced these are made over a simple resist a flat one just like this and we give it a little bit of a floret or you can make one kind of like this this one you can make over this same pattern that i just showed you only not use the pages and make it long um, so there's lots of different ways to approach it lots of different fibers you can use you can be super creative uh, and just take it any direction you want and mostly I want to help you get over this hurdle of learning how to wet felt on a book template and um, maybe that will really just start to expand your ideas for doing more so let me just plant a seed and say when I'm trying to figure out a new pattern I just use regular paper and that's how I planned this one so you may see someone else felting with it we have a uh, we have this free pattern in our PDF tutorial and for everyone's convenience I'm gonna link to that right now in case you're just coming onto this feed and you haven't seen that before so let me um, jump over to that link to it and then I'll say hi to some more people and we're gonna get started so I'm going to move a few things around here and just say hi to some folks. I think I missed something. Um, okay, I'm going to post a link here for you. And if you're just joining us, check in, say hi and where you're from. And thank you so much for being here. Here is a long link. If you don't have the PDF for the fairy tale pumpkin, definitely you want to download that so that you can have the pattern that we're gonna work on today. Gottlieb says she's at the beach. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, and I'm reading what some of you are saying. Uh, oh, Amber's with her mom. Paula says happy birthday to Kayla. Connie says she's not gonna felt a pumpkin, but she's working on another project while she listens. Always nice to have you here, Connie. We appreciate you. And um, okay, very good. So. Thank you all so much for being here. Here's how we're gonna to do today. Um, I have re broken this down into four different segments. We're gonna look at the supplies first. Uh, we're going to lay out and wet felt while we lay out. And then we're going to full our pumpkin and stuff it. And then we're gonna make the stem. So sometimes I'm gonna be talking with you over it and sometimes I'm gonna let the video play. At any time, if you have questions, please post your questions and I'm going to help try and get you through it. Whatever 
assistance you need. So here's just a quickie five minutes looking at the setup and all the supplies you need to make a fairy tale pumpkin. Here's a quick look at what we're going to be wet felting together today. This is one of my fairy tale pumpkins with white and lots of creamy yellows and greens. This has been wet felted and then stuffed. And so we're gonna learn how to felt these lobes over what's called a book template or a multi-page template. And um, that's what we're gonna do. So let me just tell you really quickly how we are set up here. I'm working on, I have a towel underneath here and some grippy shelf liner just so I don't slide around. This is my boot tray, which you've seen a hundred times. And this is more grippy shelf liner so that we don't slide around. We, the basic tools we're gonna to use, this is the template pattern. This came out in 2017 in the fall we came out with our free PDF for doing the same project we're doing today and um, so now we're just going to record the video for it so you can download that PDF and trace out this pattern or modify it and make your own my original template had nine lobes one two three four five six seven eight nine or nine pages individual pages Today I'm only going to do seven just to expedite it a little bit and I do find it's nice to have an odd number. It makes it look a little more interesting. So you'll download the pattern. You can use this or a real thin foam product or maybe bubble wrap. You can sew down the middle or you can tape it or you can, you know, however you can get it to all stay together. So you'll trace out your template and this exact template makes this pumpkin right here. So we're gonna wet felt the body and I'll show you how I make the stems and attach those as well. The other thing you'll need is some sort of barrier for your hands. I like to use mesh, especially for this product project. You can also use a really thin plastic, like the thinnest plastic you can buy. It all adds bulk when you're felting all these pages, but this I like allows the water to pass through and my hands can feel how the project is progressing. We sell this in the shop, we just call it wet felting mesh and it's a polyester fabric. You may like another, another product if you wet felt already. We're gonna use a ball brass to wet our project and of course some water and I'll be working with hot water today. Our olive oil soap and um, if you have difficulty finding the pages, there's a couple of uh, tips and tricks you might try. One is for today, I put, since I taped some pages together, I just went and put little bits of tape on each page. What you're gonna see once we get felting is that these pages tend to wanna stick together when they're wet, and this would just help you find that page. Another trick, uh, this is in our tutorial, is I put little pieces of cardstock in a sandwich baggie. So what you can do is start to mark the next page so you know where to flip over. This will make sense once we get going, but it's just a tip to help you find your pages because these are so thin and stick together. You'll want to have um, some towels, of course, and that's about all the tools because we're just going to felt by hand. So let's look at the fibers. In the tutorial, I use merino top. Today, we are going to use short fiber merino bats. These are 19 micron merino bats and we sell them in our shop. I've taken just two ounces today. I think my first pumpkin probably weighed like four ounces. I'm gonna go a little bit thinner today. This is just about two ounces and I've separated it into, these larger pieces are seven for the seven pages that I'm, I'm gonna do, the seven, I think it'll be seven sides, and then some smaller pieces because you don't always need to wrap all the way around. So I've just separated it to make the going a little bit faster. And then these are my decoration fibers. I have hand dyed silk hankies and we sell an array of solid colors in the shop. This is just a little bit of merino top, this green here. I have Tessa silk, sari silk waist, dyed bamboo, um, more white bamboo and white neps. And that's about all I'm gonna use for the decoration fibers on this particular pumpkin. And if you visit our 
either our group living felt friends or even my personal page on facebook mariespalding.com and you look at the album from last year people shared so many pumpkins they made just from the tutorial that you can find lots and lots of inspiration for colors this is one uh my orange one it's only half stuffed right now but you can see all the shinies i've emptied the stuff out um, you can see all the shinies in there so it's really really fun and you can make them just any color you want okay so that is the quickie version of just kind of getting set up and ready and all the supplies you need as I mentioned in that segment if you're working with merino top if you prefer to do that that's how all my initial pumpkins were made I've just kind of fallen in love with the ease of working with these bats so um, if you're working with merino top check out the PDF tutorial that we just posted because that will explain how to lay out the fibers which is essentially the same I start in the spine going up and down and then I go sideways and later I trim around the edges of the template so Whatever you choose to do is really fine. And, you know, maybe you'll experiment in working with both. Um, someone says my thumb brace is off. That is great. <laughs> yes. You know what? I'm trying to heal my thumb, and I found that the thumb brace was really restraining it. So every day I'm just coaxing my thumb to get better and better. Thank you for thinking about me. <laughs> I appreciate that. I'll be able to use it fully again soon, I hope. Okay, so we're going to jump right into the wet felting portion. We may need to speed part of that up. At any time during that portion, please pause and ask questions. Um, I can talk over the work that we're doing. I can pause the work that we're doing and address any issues that we have. Um, so if you are going to be felting along with me, what we're gonna do is wet felt as we go. You can have your water hot or room temperature. By the time you get to the end of wrapping this pumpkin, it's not gonna matter. Your water will be cold anyway. So start with warm water if you want um, and just have everything ready. So we're going to begin the wet felting portion right now and I'm gonna watch for your questions as we work. So thanks for being here, everybody. I really appreciate you so much so that it doesn't get buried under any of the folds. You definitely want to have a towel handy so you can dry your hands in between. It's a little bit easier to lay out um, little bits of merino top when you're working with merino top. With the batting, we're just going to have to piece our way around. This is going to be the top and this will be the bottom probably. You can do it however you want. So. I'm going to put one layer down. We'll cover the whole pumpkin. Um, what I think we'll do is we'll piece in, we'll go ahead and just piece in two layers at a time. And you can vary your angles, so crisscross your fibers. You'll see that your bat has a grain, and that's all you're going to see that I'm doing is just turning that grain turning that grain so that it goes first up and down and then side to side, however you want to do it. You can wet out however you like to wet out. I also like to use a sponge. There's very little uh, fiber to go through here. So just having one wetting, one method for wetting will go a little bit faster, meaning not the sponge and the ball broth. And my water is warm, it's not scalding hot. You're gonna find that these bats felt up really quickly. So now, here comes the challenge of, you'll find each page here, so like this is one set of pages, 
If you're not sure, whenever you're working on a set of pages, you can just tuck these under that page and then you'll easily find where you're going. And you can put this one in the middle here. So this one's in the middle, we'll fold against that and then we'll come here and wrap this fiber all the way around. So if you've wet felted over resist before, that's ideal to have wet felted over resist and at least know how to do that. And we'll go through a few of these pages together and then you'll get it. You'll understand exactly. As you come around the pages, just straighten this out the best you can. And if you get any real big folds, then you can just hold the page down and just tease the fiber out. When we wet felt the over resist, if you're new to this or if this is the first time you're seeing it, we want to get the fiber really close to this material, which is the resist. Um, otherwise, if it scooches off, we get what's called, a, well, you might look at it as a ridge. We call it a seam. If it scoots off and felts it to itself, it'll make a little flat area there that you kind of can't undo if it's really done. So, If you just have too much bulk, you can pull it off. Um, or you can just try and tease it out and straighten it out because wherever you have that fiber then there's less you're going to have to put down when you get to that set of pages. So that is one set of pages done and then we can add fiber here. This is the tricky part is going over the uh, this part of the template. So what we're going to do is on every couple of pages is make sure that we wrap from the front to the back over the top and the bottom or else it's easy to get a hole on both ends. It's okay if you have a hole on one end for stuffing, but you only want, uh, ideally you only want a hole on one end, and I'll show you that later when we look at my other, my orange pumpkin again. So when you get to here, now you have one side done, then you can put your mesh back, because remember we're gonna save the decoration for last. So just get everything hugging the resist the best you can. Go ahead and add your soap and you can just felt this a tiny, tiny, tiny bit felt toward, you know, towards the center, towards the center. Just get everything to kind of hug the resist and then fold that page over. And then you sort of crease the middle open like you would an open book. Guide all your fibers in and then we're going to cover these two pages. So remember, if it's easier, use your little dividers here. The tape helps me also. And even though you have these torn, if you prefer, you know, even though you have them already sort of sized, if you prefer, you can kind of um, piece it on. So even though I came over this side, I do like to go back over, especially on these edges, because we're going to stuff this pumpkin really fat. So just piece it uh, so that you're comfortable as you go around each one, meaning you don't, it doesn't have to stick off three feet, but you want it to go over enough that you can wrap around to the other side. Three feet, I'm exaggerating, which you know I tend to do. And save all these little bits because we're gonna fill it in. If when in doubt, you can just add a little bit right down that center part there right in the middle. So then we're going to wet this uh, after we put the second layers on. And these, although these were divided into sevens, I'm just using them. Uh, I'm using like a very, very thin amount. You can see how thin it is. So if you're not sure, you can sort of do like I did and that start with two or three ounces already measured out and then divide it into at least 14 pieces so you can put two pieces on each set of pages. So 
So the mess just keeps the wool from sticking to our hands. Some countries don't use a barrier at all. Um, I'm very comfortable doing that. It's less, it's just less fuss. It's sort of a quicker way to get something to get it done if you just have a barrier that keeps the wet wool from sticking to your hands. Notice that I'm not pressing too hard. We have a lot of bulk in there. That's because the, you know, the fiber is full of still some air and water. So don't mash it too hard at this stage. Otherwise, you might cause it um, to scooch off the resist. So just try and get all the areas laying down together without being too, 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 too aggressive. So you're going to do a lot of this folding back and forth like this. Peel back this back, and you can see here's the first set of pages that we had, and now we're going to fold all this over. These are going to be the outermost parts of the pumpkin, if you'll recall, and these will be those real inner points. We're going to come back and add the design layer after we get across all the pages. Barely rubbing at all here. Barely putting any pressure at all. I'm just going to fold that back down so we can go do this other side. This surely seems like a lot of overlap, um, and that's just a result of tearing off those, those bats in advance, but it's all going to work out just fine. All of this is going to felt down and gooch together. So just for a second, I'm going to get another piece of mesh in here and get this all laying down and then we're going to come in and do this next set of pages. So hopefully you're still with me. We're going to leave this set of pages behind and sometimes what you'll find is it gets easier to sort of adjust the pages so that it doesn't get too big on one side. So you'll just flip them underneath. You'll find your way as you feel the mesh where you started. So again I'm going to put this under this page as we work to the right, and we're going to cover this set of pages. Some of the pieces just might feel too big, so go with what's uh, comfortable or tear it off tear it off as you go. That's why you want to have a way to dry your hands. So notice that one of the grain is kind of going up and down and then this one this one here is kind of going side to side. If you're working with merino top um, you can refer to our free PDF, which is, there's a free download for this project. In that PDF, we use Merino Top on this same project. So you can see the layout takes a lot longer with the Merino Top, um, but it's not more difficult. It just takes a longer time. So remember, we go under here. This just helps me create a little fold and know where I am. We go under here to fold this back open, and then we're going to pull all these fibers around to this side.
there's a lot of water in there already, so as much as you can, use the, use the water that's already in there to get the fibers to grab onto each other through the layers. And you're always adding, you know, soap at each little juncture. And when you have a set of pages kind of finished, you can rub a tiny bit, but remember, we, we want to save feltability for our design layer. So it'll depend on the fiber that you're working with and how fast it felt. These bats felt really fast. Okay, so here we go. We have this page here. We're going to fold it over and then add more here. There's another set of pages. And remember, if it's bulky, just find your way underneath. If it's kind of bulky on one side, find your way underneath and then flip it so that it kind of stays balanced. I look forward to seeing all of your magical pumpkins. Having the colors under there really helps you see, you know, whether you have a uniform, kind of a uniform thickness, so I definitely find that's a big help. I do have soap in my water here. I kind of like to add soap uh, when I'm initially running the water. I'll put it in there while the water's super hot to help it kind of dissolve, so that's less I have to add with my hands. But I don't make a soap slurry or sludge or anything like that. I just put the water, the soap in the bucket of water while it's running and immediately, you know, still hot after filling the bucket. Shove this in the middle and pull this stuff, you know, towards towards the middle, towards the middle. It's amazing how many pages there are. They just kind of keep on coming. And this is a shorty. What you see, this one, see how short this one is? So I didn't notice that when I was laying out the fiber, but um, so this is going to cover a lot. But I made some short and some large so that my pumpkin didn't look exactly the same on every lobe. But once it was stuffed, it actually did anyway. So. I don't know how much that helps. So when there's this much bulk, all this folding over, I'm not going to let all that fold over. I'm going to pull as much as I can in. Um, I don't mind if it's a little wrinkly it, inside. I really don't. But normally I wouldn't put this much down intentionally. I think because it's all, 
If it's going to fold over on itself like that, then I'm going to pull it off. And so what you do is you put your hand down and then pull so that you don't pull too, you don't pull it from the edge. So just put your hand down. If you have just way too much, put your hand down and just pull it. And that's kind of a, a goner. I'm going to put a little less on this side because that side already has a whole bunch from that big fold over. So just going to carry this over this direction a little bit. And use all these little bits that you pulled off. You can kind of see the grain and see where they're going. If you're, like I said, if you have merino top, it, it's, a little, it's a slower of a layout, but it's also going to be a little more controlled of a layout as well. This is a little more... Harry Carey, I think, in this complex of a template, and one not so complex, it's they're really easy to use. And I think they're they're easy to use also, but this just isn't it isn't the most um, accurate layout. Make sure not to curl the edges of your resist as you wrap the wool around. Make sure that it stays nice and flat and you're just pulling the wool against it. The thicker your resist is, the little bit easier that is to achieve, not bending it, but it it's also uh, creates a lot of bulk in this project. So both are nice, a thin resist and a thick resist that you can feel. Now I'm going to peel this back for a second. Remember what I said, at the tops and bottoms, we really want to make sure that we're going all the way around because these are really fragile points where everything comes together. So we'll make sure that we take some... I've been tucking it around each time, um, but I'm going to make sure, at least at a few points, that I have gone around and reinforced what is the very top and the very bottom of the pumpkin. Even though we'll be cutting one of them open, we don't want two ends open. Unless you're making a light, if you're making it glow or something, then <laughs> if you want to insert a light in underneath, you could do that. Or if you're making a, um, well, I was going to say a candy bowl, but you're going to want the bottom solid. So if you want to make it a lamp or something, then you can have both, both ends open. But it's nice to have that the holes be more intentional. I know because on my very first one I didn't manage those ends and it was open on both ends. It's okay but I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. So we're getting very close here. We're down to just a just another couple of set of pages going to cover this set and this set and we're going to be done. And so if you're working with merino top, it's a lot lot slower. And I've made a few pumpkins with these bats and I really like how they came out. These bats are just dreamy to felt with. They really really are. So remember, just take this is, looks bulkier than it is because it's dry. There's a lot of air in it. How's everyone doing? Do you feel like this is helpful so far? Are you learning? So I'm going to 
shift some of these pages underneath so it's a little more even. Just take your time, find your way. I know this looks very webby on the camera, and it is. But I think you'll find that once your pumpkin is all together, you're just going to love the results. Another great big, great big fold over on a little shorty page. Not to fear. We will corral all of this. And if you get some really stringy bits that you don't, you're not happy to deal with, just tear them off. Like that was just some long stringy bit. Now, if this just feels, if you're watching this and you haven't worked with the batting before, but you have worked with Merino Top, um, but you haven't done this, then definitely check out our PDF tutorial. You know, maybe that'll feel a little more manageable the first time. Uh, if you haven't worked with the batch or if this just feels a little unruly, then do it with Merino Top because you, you are going to get lovely results. It's just going to take... A lot longer to lay out. That's the only difference is it takes longer to lay out. Or some other fiber that you like to wet felt with. So this is our last join of pages. Now I'm down to my stuff that's not already pre-torn. So I'm going to piece this on. And then you'll notice that each set of pages got two layers and each one had uh, got two layers, one going this direction, one going that direction, and each had fold over around the edges. And you'll want that so that you don't have a hole. You want the fold over to reinforce the points of the resist. 
and then you can stuff it without worry. If on a set of pages you have an edge that you're worried about, like somewhere where the fiber didn't quite come around all the way, when you get there, if it feels, you know, if it feels like a thin spot or you feel like you didn't quite wrap around, then patch in when you're there. Go ahead and just take, you know, take a small bit of fiber and just put it in that place right while you're there. So you're not worrying about it and you don't have to battle it later. Holes are Holes are something that are best avoided in the initial layout process. So just get a little extra fiber in place right there. What if you think it's too thin? So this is our last set of pages. This is where we started. Bring everything over. Then we're going to put it in the oven and bake for 30 minutes. <laughs> Just kidding. Would that it were that easy. Okay. Now this side might look even thinner because I have so much tape going on here, but just for fun and good measure, I'm going to drop a little bit of fiber right on here. And we are ready for our decorative layer. So I don't need this one to wrap around. I just want to not see that blue tape for whatever reason a little bit. So I'm going to fill that in and we're going to put our decorative layer on. So first, let me redistribute my pages, and um, you won't really have to worry about the, these separation pages so much, but it does kind of, it is kind of fun to see where you are, what's happening. So we're going to start right here where we are uh, on this, which is right where we started, and I've got all my fibers tucked around the top and the bottom, and I hope that stays. And if it feels, uh, as we go around, what you can do is just on every couple of pages, is go ahead and drop just a little more fiber there, maybe on the one that you feel will be the bottom. Drop a little more fiber there so that it wraps around to the other side um, so that you know you don't have a hole on the bottom. So before we jump to the design layer, let me, uh, before we start putting the fibers in the design layer, let me just show you something. 
when as we do our design layers each of these points right here is this right here this peak of the lobe so we want our designs not to stop halfway so you're going to see that we're stretching across these bends these points of the lobes as we design that's one thing so that way it doesn't look like there's a strong line even though on some you probably can see it overall in the design unless I had pointed it out you wouldn't really notice it now about the bottom if you have both sides open what happens when you go to cut it off and stuff it this is the top right this is what happens on the bottom is that hole keeps opening up and that's what happened the first time I didn't manage, uh, I didn't make sure I managed the wool wrapping around. So unless that's what you want is an open bottom, which you can have, stuff all of this with wool or polyfill or whatever you use and sew a quilt square or something in there or put, you know, this on the bottom, but it's more attractive when it's sealed, I think. Okay, so here we go. We're going to put our design layer on and each each set of lobes is a new project, so just have fun with that. For my, whenever I have hankies, I like to have scissors um, available to cut. And hankies stick to everything. They stick to wool really great. This is a silk hanky, which is just a cocoon that has been degummed and stretched into a square by a human um, and then dyed by me. I dyed these so you're gonna find that they really, they, one, they can stretch to a great degree and two, they're super, super thin. And then I like to just stretch them open and let them get crazy and then cut them also. If you have any snags on your hands, they're gonna stick to it. And if you have a difficult time working with them, you can wear gloves. So we're gonna go show that on the top and we're going to go around the edge I'm going to separate my hankies out and I'm going to add this is green bamboo I'm going to let that stick over I love this green bamboo so much white bamboo my hands are wet so everything wants to stick to them this is a little bit of Tessa silk the brown I'm just going to streak some brown through here It's a little merino top, which is very similar to the other color I have on there. You can even put some neps down there. If you have a difficult time getting your neps to stick, the hankies hold them down really well. So that's kind of fun. And then just whatever you want on each layer. So just have fun with each set of pages and get your design in place. This is Sari Silk Waste, and I also find it easy to cut. Uh, I cut this before I started working with it. And you can cut it to get it into small bits. So it creates a nice textured silky glob <laughs> wherever you put it. now on each set of pages after you put your design layer down initially 
we'll rub that side make sure that you felt up and down the middle where the pages come together rub towards the center and yes we're going to get under there and you know fold those around but before you even turn the page now I'm rubbing a little bit and not too too hard but the thing I want to warn you about is those hankies stick to everything so be gentle in your rubbing initially and make sure that you peel back your mesh often which I'm going to do right after I fold all these design elements over see how they kind of tend to stick to the mesh so go ahead and just use that to your advantage and guide it around to the other side and just bring them all around and then we'll design whichever you know whichever side of pages you want to go to next but I'm going to felt this side a little bit more once I have this folded over we'll felt it by hand a little bit more and we're going to work our way around the pumpkin like this just working each set of pages You'll fold up and down, side to side, and in circles. Always, my circles are always, you know, towards the center, towards the center, trying to get that wool to hug the resist, hug the resist. Don't rub too so hard that your fibers are peeling un, up under the mesh or um, coming through. If they're coming through, then you know you're rubbing too hard. And as you do each set of pages, make sure also to work that top and bottom just a little bit. So before I go too far, I'm just gonna peel this back. See how the hanky wants to stick? So just take that off and then begin again. Hankies just love to stick to anything. So always peel back and test. After a while, they'll just stick to the wool. You can also tuck this mesh under a little bit and felt the edges, but before you felt the underneath side too much, get those design pages in place. We're going to just keep going, design each little set of our pages here, and then we'll really get to hand felting. When the hankies are felted, they don't make a lot of sheen except kind of, you know, where they're clustered, but they do make a lovely texture. This view and this camera shows the real colors a little bit better. The overhead camera kind of washes it out. So in just a few places where I can, I'm going to show you this view. And to some degree, we're going to have to expedite this layout um, so that we can finish this whole thing. But thanks y'all for staying with me. And I just so look forward to seeing your pumpkins. So big hearts to all of you.
I just emptied my tray because it's getting so full of water from adding water and it just passing through. So if your tray, if your project is sitting in a puddle, then go ahead and empty your tray. You're going to squish out more water when we really start felting it. I'm just going to put a little white there to kind of mute this part a little bit, not because it needs it to hold it down, just for kind of fun. And I guess I already have a lot of green, so. Haha, ha, so here's what I promised. We have to speed this up in order to meet our time frame. We really just have like, um, well, you know, it's a big repeat. Page after page is repeat. So see that we're just felting as we go along, you know, during each little segment. And we're just going to bust this out so y'all can see the whole process.
So there's a question about the tray. This is just a boot tray that I got at the hardware store for, at the time, honestly, it cost me like $2. Target sells boot trays in their doormat section, or you can check the hardware store, which is where I got mine. Sometimes they're 10 or $15, and that's kind of expensive, but I like that it's bigger, and so I find that really helpful. Um, Let's see, I'm trying to read uh, some more people's comments. So we're just gonna jam through this. You can see page after page, you can make it a little bit different. If you don't use too many colors, you know, just pick three or four or a color palette that you like. One of the things that's really fun about designing these pumpkins is that you can make a pumpkin that you wanna display all year long. And, um, you know, if it's not orange or, purple or whatever, something that feels like fall, or maybe it is purple, but you can display it in your home just as part of your decor. So have fun with it. And if you want to experiment with the color palette first, make the small pumpkin. So some of you've just joined in and you're asking about an easier project. You can download the PDF for this. Let me see if I still have that queued up. You can download the PDF for this project um, and make any of the simple pumpkins that we showed in the beginning and we'll show them in the end also. You, uh, you can work with um, any style of fiber that you're comfortable with. Today we're working with Merino short fiber bats. Those are available in our shop. In the PDF we worked with Merino top. We have a video on our YouTube channel for wet felting a vessel. That's a great entry level project. In that, we work with our MC1 batting, which is a little more coarse. We also have a video for wet felting wrist warmers, which is a very fun project to do. You can make them as long or short as you want. And in that one, we work with Merino top also. So if you're new to wet felting, you know, make something flat first, make a trivet or a flat piece that you wanna cut and play with. Um, but wet felting over resist is really a great skill. And um, so today's project is a bit uh, intermediate, but honestly, I know people who have started here and made just amazing pumpkins, although they had wet felting experience. So I do think that's important. And I'm gonna look for a few more of your questions while we blaze through this uh, speed layout, which is really the only way to do it. <laughs> Marianne says, I wish I could come play with you guys. Uh, that would be good. You know, we're gonna have some great workshops next year, so I hope you all will think about that. Kate says she loves the bling. Thank you, Kate. And I think I'm gonna have to go back and see some of your questions. Patsy, you can do this. I hope to see you get brave with some of your colors. And I'm gonna probably uh, take a moment here and progress us to the end of this section so that um, we can wrap up this part and get to Insto Presto finished pumpkin. Now, y'all are still felting along, the group of you who are felting along. Keep at it, um, and all of this video is going to be available after. A number of people have asked that question. This live version will be made available immediately following the broadcast. We will upload this live version to our YouTube channel, which is just YouTube slash Living Felt, under the live felt along section of, we have different playlists, so look for that live section. And then just the canned version, meaning without our little bit of interaction back and forth, will be uploaded hopefully later this weekend. So we'll try and get all of these up. <laughs> Esther says workshops are a bit far away. Yes, Esther, for you, but man, you have amazing people coming to Europe all the time. So hopefully you can get some in your area. <laughs> you guys are funny. Okay. So let's see here, we're gonna jump to the end of this section, so hang with me for a second. Okay. 
so you can work those edges. Be very, very gentle on our first pass around the entire thing and make sure to peel back your mesh. If you're using plastic, that's less of a concern, but you might still want to feel how's it felting under there. Yes, Lori says I tuck the mesh around the edges. I've always used the mesh as an assist. Some people like to use plastic and I'm just starting to use plastic with some projects. I always avoided it because I couldn't feel the fiber, but I do like using it because I can feel what's happening while I'm felting. So what we're gonna do is just work your way around the entire pumpkin Notice that I put my little page marker in there so I know where I am. And we're just gonna have to blaze through this so that we have time to show all the sections of felting the pumpkin. Remember to peel back your mesh. I know we've talked about that, but especially where you have hankies. So don't rub so hard that you're causing your fibers to stick. But as you felt this, especially if you work with these short fiber bats, you might really be impressed with how quickly they felt up. So just repeat and work your way around all of the pages so that you feel like everything is felting and laying down. Notice that I just use the marker so that I know once I've gone all the way around because if without the marker you have no idea <laughs> where you where you are. You back to the front, front to the back once you get to like this. So um, that's all I use that little um, marker page for and work your way, like I said, just around the entire thing. Make sure to work all the edges, the top, the bottom, the middle. It's easy just to work the, you know, the flat pancake areas, but you want to felt everything really well, and then we're going to felt it off the mesh too. Okay y'all, so I'm going to have to jump us ahead so that we can get to felting off the mesh, I think. Um, yeah, so we're going to want to um, get to the end of this section, and so I'm going to progress us forward, and you just keep taking your time. Okay, this I do want to show you this part real quick. Um, after I've rubbed all of the pages, then I'm going to roll this with the mesh on and it's more like just like a walking roll, just kind of a walking roll. And we're going to do that with the mesh in place and then even after we remove the mesh. 
as soon as you start to roll, you know, water comes out and that's good. At some point you want to start removing water from your project. Sometimes as the fibers start to get close together, too much water tends to make them float and that keeps more distance between the fibers. So don't worry about the water coming out. Then um, Jillian says she has a difficult time keeping the felt warm. Jillian, if you are felting, especially with a fine fiber like merino top or like these short fiber bats, honestly, you don't even need to keep them warm. We do huge garments and the water isn't even hot until we get to the fulling stage. So if your fiber is fine, you don't necessarily need to keep the water or the fiber warm. My water was cold throughout pretty much this project because it goes cold just as you're working. So that's not really necessarily a concern. Um, otherwise, what you can do is only put a shallow amount of water in your bucket. Keep, if you need the hot water, keep replenishing that hot water and you can blot water out of your project too, which we're going to do here in just a minute or so. Um, someone asked, does the ball, does the ball brass um, work better in this case? You know, it's just a matter of preference. I do use a sponge a lot, especially on a thicker layout. And in this case, it's so thin that the water is just going right in. So I just wanted to show y'all this, uh, this kind of uh, rock and roll process. And I'm rolling from, you know, the sides and from the top. Just work this. It doesn't take very long. It's about, I think, you know, a five or 10 minute process, you'll feel how it's felting. And then we're going to take off the mesh and um, hand felt some more. So let's jump ahead. If you feel that everything is kind of staying laid down and together, and you can rub it with your wet soapy hands on the surface and it's not sticking to you but it's um, laying down then you can continue felting through without the mesh so why don't you work page by page and take the mesh off as you go if you have uh, silks in there whether t you know tessa silks or bamboos these silky kinds of things you're going to notice even the hankies that they feel a little slimy um, in your fingers, but that doesn't mean that the fiber is not felted. They just feel a little slimy when they're wet. Make sure you work all those perimeters as you go around on each set of pages. and those tops and bottoms. If your pumpkin looks roughed up from you doing this, then definitely keep your mesh or your plastic in place until the fibers are laying down better. blot my pumpkin a little bit because it's still pretty wet so I'm going to go through and blot all the pages just mark where I am I'm just going to blot water out of each page and then we're going to felt it a little bit more and it's going to be ready to take off our resist already So, 
just for good measure, we're going to roll it a bit more, and you can manipulate it a bit. Okay, everyone, how is this so far? Um, I'd love to know where you are for those people who are felting along, and I know some of you are going to watch later, and I've put you through a really long rendition of uh, wet felting it. It could definitely be shorter, but for those who are beginners, I want you to just kind of feel that the process is demystified and really easy. So where we are with our pumpkin right now, um, besides the fact that everyone is planning our dinner and desserts, I think at Diane's, so <laughs> I'm gonna think about what I'll bring. <laughs> Definitely everyone's talk of uh, food is making me hungry and ready to eat. Where we are with our pumpkin is, we're going to evaluate the felt. I'm gonna show you what that looks like when you know it's ready to take out the resist. We'll take out the resist and we'll continue felting it after it's off the resist. You just always do that. You always felt after you take the resist off. There's a little bit more shrinking um, happening. So we're going to jump over to the next video and some of that will be sped up as well. This is about a 10 minute section where we're going to finish folding the pumpkin, um, insto presto, dry it overnight. Um, so we'll finish felting it. We're going to rinse it, all the soap out. We're going to soak it in a little vinegar bath and then we'll dry it and stuff it. And then we'll make the stem. So I can't wait to see um, how you all come out with your pumpkins and I hope you plan to post it. So let me cut to this video. Let's look at evaluating our felt and then let's get it stuffed. I'm so excited. So we've only been felting this pumpkin, honestly, for just a few minutes. You were felting so much during the layout process. This is what it looks like. It's very colorful and will look very different once it's dry. Some things will be more muted and some things will be more shiny. And you know it's time to take it off the resist if you see it buckling on the resist. 
Um, or you can really pinch it up off the resist and you feel like you have a solid piece of fabric. So you can go around and test all those pages. You could continue shrinking it on your resist if you want, but if you know that it's done, even though you don't see that indicative crinkling that you're used to seeing, but this is like what I mean by buckling, you can see that it's felting such that it's starting to pull the resist in, and so then the fabric that you've made starts to buckle against the walls of the resist. And when you know it's time, then we'll cut it open. I'm going to cut open this end right here. So you want to get the resist out without cutting the resist. So just be gentle at first. Get some really sharp scissors. And you don't have to make too big of a hole if your resist is very flexible. Just want to find your way down to the center there. There we go. Now, the hole always gets bigger as we go, but it's going to have to be big enough to get the resist out and to stuff it later. And it's intact. Some of my tape might need to be replaced, or but we got it out. Okay, so now that the resist is out, then you can continue felting it the same way we did. You can heat it up too if you want. And here's what it looks like. empty and so then when we stuff it everything will change a bit You can go around and make sure that each of your lobes it doesn't have the seam that we talked about and you can rub out this area right there. So get those peaks out of each of those lobes.
once you have felt it over your entire pumpkin and you're satisfied that you have a nice fabric that is going to hold up to being stuffed it's not uh, pilling under your fingers you have a real nice fabric then rinse all of the soap out and put it in a little pail or a bucket with water and just a quarter cup of vinegar or less and soak it for at least 15 minutes and then set it out to dry roll it in a towel spin it out we use a spin dryer um, so spin all the water out and then set it out to dry for stuffing you can also sometimes i like to stuff mine when they're damp with quilt squares so you can try that as well some people use plastic plastic bags whatever they have i just use quilt squares because i i like to just toss them in the washing machine when i'm done so we're going to rinse soak with a little bit of vinegar and then set it to dry overnight to stuff our little pumpkin today i'm going to go ahead and use polyfill and usually I use like this one is stuffed with our CW1 core wool and I like the weight. Uh, polyfill works fast also and it's really economical if you want to save your wool. This is what I like to use. It's called Silky Soft. Uh, let's see if we can pull back and show it. It's called Silky Soft Ultra Plush Fiber um, and it is polyfill brand. I like this. I used to make sock dolls for fun <laughs> and to donate and um, this stuff stuffs really well so you can just keep adding to it adding to it so what we're going to do is really stuff all of the lobes super super well and I like to do them gradually and work your way around <laughs> Insert your favorite dance tunes right here. I'm pretty sure that in reality it took me at least 10 minutes to stuff this pumpkin because I just like to get it full, 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 full. So take your time and don't leave any saggy baggy parts. Your pumpkin should be plump. Now we are ready for a stem. We might work some of these into the vine uh, stem as well. And this is a Loch Ness. This is Prairie. Um, actually, it looks like olive. And this is just a little hand carded bat that I made from our Emerald Forest blend and so I think I'm going to use that on the stem today because I think it'll I think it'll match nicely so the first thing we're going to do is wrap our wires with wool and then we're going to wet felt them to do 
this one. This will be the main stem. We're going to build up the bulk first. And what I like to do is just make a little hole or loop to grab the wool through like that. And then I'm going to twist it together. You can make it longer than you need it because you're going to plunge it into your pumpkin and you can cut it if it's too long. Then you can just squeeze it shut or twist it one more time. Can't do that. And needle nose pliers will work really good here. Okay, so this is the batting, which is really fine, the 19 micron short fiber batting that we made our pumpkin with. As I mentioned, you can also use core wool or whatever fiber you want. I just wanted to build an under layer with something besides my finished color, just something to give me a little bit of bulk. And I'm just drafting it out a little bit because honestly, I just piled it on there. I didn't take much care in shaping it or anything before I put it on there. I just grabbed a little lump. So notice that I'm wrapping really tight. If you haven't seen me wrap before, this hand is doing all the twisting and this hand is holding tension. So I'm not flipping it around. I don't want to get a bunch of air in it. I want to keep it really nice um, and tight, really nice and dense. So you're just dry felting it in your hand a little bit like that. Okay, so before we get to the wet felting part, let's go ahead and wrap this little guy and that'll be our little uh, curly cube bit. And so it's kind of the same idea that you're gonna make a twist. And I'm gonna wrap this with some silk hankies. Now you can also put some wool underneath so let's do that. I'm going to wrap a little bit of wool first and I'm going to just choose this color that I brought in. So let's put that through. Just a little wool to give a cover up this color. Sometimes I use silver wire, sometimes I use white wire. So we're just going to mask this color of the wire a little bit. And it's the same idea, holding tension here and twisting here and that gives me personally a lot of control. You might have another way that you like to twist but for me that works really well. As long as you just go one direction. And then once you get to the end of a strip of fiber then you can kind of go back up and back up and down it like that and just kind of dry felt it together. Now, I don't know how long I want this. I think for this guy to be long enough, but I'm just going to cover a little bit more so you can't see the brown. And I'm just grabbing a little tiny bit like this. Start kind of where I left off, going the same direction. And I know my direction because I always twist towards me. So you might kind of have to figure that out after a while, how you like to work. Okay. So we won't need all of this excess, but for now I'm gonna keep it and just turn it up so that it's not poking my hand. If I wanna wrap this with the hanky, the hankies grab onto everything. And the reason I like it is because it just adds some fun sheen and then it's gonna kind of look a little wild and wooly and we're gonna kind of just do the same thing that we did. I'll leave some areas open a little bit because we're going to end up um, wet felting this in place. And then when you get all on there that you want, you can just cut that off. I'll probably use some of that in my other stem too, just so they match a bit. So that's ready for wet felting and let's get this one ready for wet felting and so for that I'm going to just set up my little wet felting tray.
For this part of the stem right here, I like the any lines in the fiber. If you have lines in your fiber, like you can see the gradients of colors running this way, I like them to go up and down. So we already have a base layer on here. You really don't need to put much more fiber on there. You can either, if you have a bat like this and you already like how it's going, you can just tear it off. You can just tear it off and then we're gonna felt it right over this, like this. Or if you have just a big hunk like this or something else and you want it a little more broken up so that you don't have just these same long lines, then make yourself a little mat like this, just like your own little bat and layer it so that you stack it. And that's if you have striations in your fiber like mine, uh, or like if you use something like the Merino Silk Blend, it's nice to see those lines going up the shaft of the stem rather than around like this. And so if you don't want to lay it all out like mine, then you can shingle it like I did just there. Pull off little bits. I'm going to tear a little bit of this off and just fatten it up right there. And this is gonna overlap, but I want it to be kind of bulky and chunky. And we're gonna leave some on the bottom kind of dry, and I'm gonna make another little mat that we can needle felt onto the pumpkin, and we can just use this like it is. Or you can make it wet felted. In the tutorial, in the PDF tutorial, I wet felt this, and I think on my last few pumpkins, I've left it unwet felted and then just needle felted it onto the pumpkin. So what we're gonna do is roll this all up. And I, I'm fine letting it stick off because sometimes I blunt it and then shape it or cut it into a shape. And we're just gonna wet felt this just like this. If you have bamboo, bamboo can be really helpful at this, doing anything that's canes or anything that's round or long like this. So go ahead and bring your bamboo in. Before we do the big stem, let's just do the little stem. And I have my water and my olive oil soap, and we're just gonna felt this so that it all stays down. If you get this olive oil soap from us, um, if you're new to felting, just let it dry in between uses. It's gonna last you much longer if you just let it dry and reharden. So notice I just go side to side first and then up and down. And all we want is all of these fibers to just kind of hug on to each other and stay in place. When they're dry, we'll put them on our pumpkin. I'm leaving the bottom a little bit dry and a little bit undone because it's gonna help me fluff it out and kind of attach it to the rest of what I'm doing. So let's do the big one. The big one, I'm gonna let the top taper up so I can cut it if I want to and I'm gonna leave at least some of the bottom um, kind of alone. If you want it to be dry, you can even wrap it in plastic if you wanna really keep it dry. So just wrap it up nicely. And I do have some Angelina in there, a little bit of bling. My water is just barely warm. This is the same water that I wet felted my pumpkin with. This is the easy way, just with the, the bamboo, is you can just roll it in the bamboo just like that. You don't want it to dig up this end of your, your fiber, so just pay attention to that. Make sure you're not tearing that all up. But I'm gonna leave it a little bit dry so I can needle felt it down. So already that's shaping up, and I think, like in the past, sometimes I've attached this later. I'm just gonna get this in there right now. Now that I got that one started, and this one, that's where it's gonna meet the base. I'm gonna split all this fiber open and actually wrap this around here. Oops. 
This is different from the tutorial. I don't think we have the little side piece in the, in the PDF tutorial. So this is where it's all gonna be sitting down on the pumpkin itself. And I'm just gonna patch it in a little bit here. And I'm going to felt that right to that little stem. Your hands will tell you more what's happening than if it's buried in the bamboo. So at some point you might want to just get your hands in there and feel how's everything coming together and how felted is it under there. If you want it really firmly felt it, that's what you need to do is really get your hand in between there. Or if you don't have this dilly bob, then you can just use the, the bamboo and get harder and harder. I just like to feel what's happening. Okay, so that feels pretty good. And what I'm gonna do is let this dry overnight. I would rinse it first, and then I'm gonna let it dry, and then we'll attach it to our pumpkin. With needle felting. So you'll want more of this same fiber like I have here. You want more of that same fiber for attaching it. If you want to give it some shape uh, overnight, if you want it to have a bit of a curly, now this one has wire all the way, but any part that's loose that is above, up, off the wire, if you want it to have some curl, then wrap it around a knitting needle or something like that and hold it in place after you rinse it. So let me get that and I'll show you. You want to just wrap it wrap it around something to give it some curl, something either big curl or little curl. What you can do is twist it around and then just get it to hang on there however you can. So find the, the thing that you would like it to twist to, so it could be big or little, and then clamp it down with whatever you have. You can use rubber bands or um, Clothes pins, depending on what you're using, just use whatever you have. Now I'm going to rinse mine first, and I don't know if I'm going to use this great big knit, knitting needle, but this shows you the idea. And to dry it, just bind it to that item so that it stays. Yep, 
So whatever is the shape you want it to keep. And like I said, this one will be fine because it's got wire all the way in it. You can shape it however you want after. So that's how we'll dry it after we rinse it. It is about time to call this pumpkin done. And before we do that, we need to add a stem. You can have all kinds of fun with this. I've seen people be very creative with this project and make some stems way cooler than mine. But this is how um, these three right here were done, like the PDF tutorial. And so we've already gone over wet felting the stem. This little base here was wet felted at least softly and then needle felted on. I've added a little bit of extra fibers and teased this fiber out. And they're just needle felted right to this top. Um, skin, if you will. Now these are stuffed with core wool, but um, I don't think that really matters because you're just going to be needle felting the fiber to this fabric that you felted. These uh, two purple pumpkins, the difference is the stem is wet felted the same way we show you in the tutorial, but this portion is just locks over our MC1 fiber. So play with that and have fun and let's just finish uh, this one that I started with you right here. Let's finish this one together because it's only going to take a minute. What I brought is the stem that I made with you and you know it looks really rough when it's all by itself like this. Some of the fiber that I wet felted that stem from. I have a little bit of our MC1 batting. If you're not familiar with that, um, you can watch a lot of our videos we use it. It's a domestic short fiber merino cross. It's got a great crimp to it. You can wet felt it, you can needle felt it. It's just a, a nice general purpose fiber. And then some locks here to add that in. So with the stem, I just curled the tip up. You can cut it if you like too, but I found that it's kind of nice if you can seat it down on the almost the bottom of the pumpkin so that it doesn't warble in there. It goes all the way down. You can stuff this more if you want. My pumpkin is completely full. There's just a little bit of a, an area here that if you wanted to fill it, you certainly could. Fluff out the fibers that were left from the wet felting portion, and if you want, you can tuck some batting, this is our, like I said, our MC1 batting or something similar underneath there to just kind of be um, an adhesion layer if you want. And you can even blend it a little bit on top. So treat it kind of like a glue and work it in with your finer fibers if you want to. And that's just optional. Of course, you can needle felt merino top. It's just a little more challenging. So I'm just gonna kind of alternate this a little bit with the fine fibers. And these I'd like them to kind of go down into the, the peaks a little bit. I don't some people like to take theirs really far. I just like to take mine a little ways, not too far. And then it's totally your option if you want to add some locks on top. So I did decide to go ahead and add some core wool and firm up the area right around my stem. And then the best needle I found for doing this, for at least my pumpkins and my fibers, was the 36 triangle. So we'll just speed put all this little area on and can't wait to see what you do with yours.
So this part just takes a little bit of time. You can totally have fun with it. Like I said, I used locks and some MC1 in our merino top. And I did find that, you know, stuffing the shaft right around where you insert the stem is really helpful. Otherwise, it's really airy under there. And for those who already needle felt know that it's difficult to firm it up if there's nothing for it to go into. So I, I just really look forward to seeing the pumpkins that you guys make. My husband has claimed uh, at least one of these for our home because he likes the color so much. Um, and I just had such a blast you know, I think making that's them. just about it. I'm gonna call this pumpkin done. There it is, y'all, my pumpkin's all done. This is the, the pumpkin that I made with you today. Um, so the only difference again between this one and our PDF is that this one has seven lobes and the PDF has nine. If you find that, you know, nine is a little bit intimidating, try the seven, you know, try an odd number, it totally works. And I am just very excited to see what you all make. The range that came across last year, we came out with this tutorial last year in the PDF version, and the range of pumpkins that people made just blew us away. And then people were just, you know, riffing off of each other and, you know, emulating or being inspired by what each other made and that's just super super fun so here's my invitation to you work on your pumpkin finish it over the weekend post it by like midnight sunday and then on wednesday during woolly wednesday we're gonna draw a name and someone will win um, one of our specialty designer packs just any of them that you want so post your pumpkin by midnight sunday wherever your midnight is post it right here to facebook.com slash living felt you can post it in our group also which is living felt friends um, but post it here for the drawing and a chance to win and hey if this has been your first time joining in thank you so much for being here and to our veterans who always um, join in and make our felt alongs and our weekly show and our community so much fun. I just love you so much and I appreciate you. I invite you to join us on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday at two o'clock central. We are going to unveil our group collaboration for this year's Felt United. If you don't know what that is, search right here on Facebook, Felt United. It is an annual group sort of art project for felt makers. There's a new theme every year and this year it's texture. So about 50 works of art have been sent to us here at Living Felt and we are going to unveil that. And I just thank you all so much for being here. I'm gonna repost the tutorial just so that it's convenient. Download the PDF, make your pattern, felt your pumpkin, and post it by midnight Sunday for a chance to win. Join us for Wooly Wednesday this Wednesday. Follow us here on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. This video is gonna be made, made available immediately after right here with my sound gaffes and all. And then we'll edit that for Facebook and post a condensed version too. Thank you all so much. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you. You make my life richer as do all these beautiful people close around me who help me get through all these little hurdles and help me do this for you. So I hope you have a great, great weekend. Whatever you do, you are amazing. You are talented. You are creative. Give yourself a chance today. Give yourself a chance to succeed and a, and a chance to, to fail like I have with my sound today. I appreciate you guys. Have a great weekend. Bye.